Now, the world is grappling with the coronavirus pandemic and a lot is changing. Several countries are adopting new ways and innovative technology. Well, innovation expert Dean Furman is joining us now to discuss the impact, uses and advances of technology during and beyond COVID-19. What can we expect? Morning, Dean, and thank you very much uh, for your time. You know, what sparked uh, the idea for us to have this conversation on ENC this morning was I saw a report, for example, from Switzerland saying that some scientists or some designers are working on what will be regarded as a virtual mask. And I also saw a report out of the U.S. saying a university in Chicago is working on something called smart PPE. So how important is technology helping us in the fight? Let's just start with that overriding question and innovation helping us fight COVID-19. Yes, yeah, so it's playing a major, major role, but I think it's the world still grappling to try and move at speed to actually help and find these different resources. One thing that's very important one technology that's very important but something that maybe we don't see and feel is a lot of the artificial intelligence understanding all the trends and trying to predict how the sparks are going to happen and that and all the algorithms behind that using an advanced uh, machine learning and different techniques like that to actually understand you know who's good, most at risk and where sparks will be and trying to predict so that governments and private institutions can actually react and predict what's going to happen in the right way. So that's something that actually probably the biggest enabler, but something we don't see. But there have been really other innovative ways that companies have helped. And uh, for example, you could get, now get wristbands that look like those fitness trackers that um, the, the, inside a workforce, for example, that any time you go within two meters of another individual, it will vibrate and, and give you an alert okay, to keep your distance. But then it also tracks who came into contact with who. So that if someone actually did get COVID, then you can actually say these specific individuals were in their vicinity um, and for how much time. So you can sort of isolate the right people. And, and is, I mean, that, that's an interesting, yeah, that's an interesting one because I've also seen that uh, somewhere in the world they are working on on a kind of a smart mask that uh, would have some kind of a sensors in them when you're wearing it that it will pick up any any symptoms or that will help in the detection of something that might be going wrong with your system. Yes, no, so it's amazing, and and also there's some very cool facial recognition technology. So especially out of Israel now, they're working on a lot of technology that they can actually understand your respiratory functions by looking at your face. And it's actually a very advanced thing. So I can just take a video, you could be walking into an institution or something, and instead of your temperature being taken, which many feel is not a good indicator, it will actually look at your face and through artificial intelligence actually understand many things about your medical condition. And then we'll be able to say, let you in and not. I guess the only draw back with that is that, you know, suddenly the, the, that technology tells you, no, you're not allowed into a store, into a workplace. It's not freaking out. You think I better go see my doctor. I don't know why, why that is. It will need to give there, you a full. There, there, there uh, will be a question, though, about where do you draw the line between uh, people's uh, privacy and, and this. But if you see how COVID-19 is behaving and how it's affecting the whole world, some people will say, well, it's a, maybe it's a small price for us to pay in the medium term. How would you respond to that? From an innovation perspective, how far can we push the boundaries? Yeah, I think you need to push them quite far because the truth is that people's lives are at stake. So when people's lives are at stake, you have to do what you can to, to assist them to help. And I think that needs to override certain other factors. Obviously, you can't be extreme. You know what I mean? You can't put a chip in every individual, for example, to understand their every movement. And, uh, you know, but but, 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 but yeah. would that be far-fetched? And, 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 but, Dean, would that be far-fetched to put a chip in, 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 in us human beings into the future? If you think about... When you arrive at an airport currently, you have to go through a scanner and that scans your temperature and, 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 and from far and perhaps a chip might, might help to solve the problem because it would contain all your, your, your health information or you think that's too, too uh, far-fetched? You know, listen, technology-wise it can be done 100%, it can be done today. It's just, it's just whether it will be allowed, I think society would rebel a bit against that level 
of invasion of their own privacy. But you know what, even, even if you don't go with the chip, there's a lot of other wearable type of devices that can tell that and can share that, that information. And I do believe like um, a lot of people, you know, lives are at stake with the COVID, but also not just from the disease itself, from the financial impact that it's having on everyone else. A lot of people can, uh, you know, God forbid, starve to death. Um, you know, you, you got to do what you can do and you got to use every technology at your disposal um, you know, to, to, to make sure that the world can function in a great way, you know. And, and stay safe. And uh, there's no doubt, as you say, that COVID-19 has sparked a lot of innovation and technology is going to be used more and more as we go forward. Thank you very much, uh, Dean Fermin, for some of those uh, insights and examples this morning.